to this tutorial video. In this tutorial video, I'll be showing you how to knit scrappy socks. Scrappy socks is where you change color a lot, uh, so you get a fun variety of colors or maybe even patterns in your sock. It's especially fun if you're using variegated or stripy sock yarns that will give you even more variety. Now in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to weave in your ends without sewing them. Um, and I have sewed them for the toe because with the toe increases, it's a little bit too much to uh, multitask, at least for your first scrappy pair. Um, but for the foot portion, I am weaving them in as I go without a sewing needle. So I'm just weaving them in between my stitches and then just snip them. So I will be showing you how I do that. In the sock that I am knitting, I'm using the same color for three rounds before switching. You may also want to um, knit more rounds. Um, that is totally up to you, but I would advise to not go lower than three because otherwise this method will not work. Um, so I'm using the method of wrapping floats the same way as you do for color work. Um, if you have never knit color work, if you've never wrapped floats before, no worries. I'm going to show you all of that in this video, um, but it's the very same technique. So you wrap floats um, on every stitch while you are incorporating your next color uh, or while you're weaving in the ends of your previous color. I am just about to join my next color. So you can go ahead and join me for that. I would advise you to just uh, watch the tutorial video first. And then if you want to knit along with me, uh, then make sure that you have your toe ready and that you are working on the foot portion of your sock. Or um, if you are working cuff down, that you have cast on the cuff and are now uh, ready to start your next color. Uh, be sure that if you are working cuff down that you also knit one row plain after the cuff before joining a new color. Otherwise you might see that. All right, let's get knitting. All right, so this is my sock up until now and I'm midway through the third round with my current color and I am going to join a new color. So it's the second half of this route and I'm going to join a new color. First I'm going to knit until I'm about th two thirds of this needle. You don't have to be counting your stitches just so that you have about one third of your needle, uh, that you have one third of your stitches left. Um, and I'm going to join a new color and um, I am going to do that by wrapping the new yarn, which is this color. I'm going to wrap that in the final stitches of this round. And um, I'm going to hold my current color. So I'll be, I'll be um, calling this my current color and my new color. So with my current color, I am going to be um, knitting throwing style. That means with the yarn in my right hand. Um, with the new color, I'm going to be holding it at the back of my work and then holding it with my left hand. So first I'm leaving about 15 centimeters. So that's about six inches and I'm holding it here. I'm going to hold this um, new color in my left hand and you can wrap it around your fingers uh, or you can hold it in any way that you like. Uh, I'm holding it by wrapping it around my pinky finger, then going underneath it with my index finger and turning my palm. And now I'm holding the yarn in place with my middle finger and thumb. 
So now my right hand is free. Be careful to pick up your current color and not the tail of your new color. Okay, so here's where we begin. With our right needle, we are going to insert into the next stitch and also go underneath the new color. You might have to tilt your left hand like this so that it's um, less easy to slide off the needle. Then with your current color, you wrap around the needle as you usually would. And you go through the stitch. Then the next stitch, you knit as normally. That is it. And then when we see the back of the work, you see that the new color has been wrapped underneath um, the current color. Okay, let's do that again. So we go into the next stitch underneath the new color. Then we wrap the yarn around and pull through. See, now it is laying on top of our stitch there. And when we knit the next stitch as normally, when wrapping the yarn, you see that you are wrapping the new yarn as well. See that? So when you wrap your yarn around the needle to knit the next stitch, you have wrapped it around the new yarn as well. And you repeat this until you reach the end of the row. There. For the last stitch, I'm not going to wrap it anymore because otherwise it might show on the, uh, on the outside. So I'm just knitting that as normally. Okay. So now we have woven the new color through the stitches of the current color. And you might see this a little bit through the stitches here. But um, if we take both ends of the new yarn, we can pull it to the side a little bit. and then it will be less visible. Okay, so we just tuck this end in there. And now we will be starting the next round using our new color. And to do that, make sure that your old color is um, you just have to move it to your left side so that this yarn will go over that strand. And this next round we will just knit as normally. So we are completely disregarding the old color here and just starting with the new color. Here you can see where I wrapped um, some other yarns. And it's still a little bit visible if you knit across. But once you've knit a couple rows, because I've done that for every color here, it's not, it's not completely invisible, but um, you won't really be able to tell. So we knit this row around just as we normally would. I am knitting continental style, but obviously you don't need to. Um, for the wrapping, you will be knitting throwing style. There, that's the first half. And now the second half, which is also knit 
as you normally would. Okay, here we come across where we wrapped this yarn. We are just going to knit across these stitches. And the last stitch of this round will be very loose. See, it's very loose. But we can tug on the old collar to cinch that back in like that. Now is the start of the second round and in the second round we will be wrapping both um, both the old color um, and the new and and the current color. Okay so what that looks like is you're starting this round. You take the tail of your old color taking it in my left hand like this and the first stitch I'm just knitting as I normally would because um, if I wrap this yarn on the first stitch then um, you might see that on the side so the first stitch I'm just wrapping as normally uh, or I'm working as normally and then for the second stitch I will be wrapping the old color and I have a trick to make this even easier so um, you go into the stitch and then underneath the um, the yarn that you want to wrap and to make it easier you can move your index finger to the front I might need some more tension for that so you can move it to the front so that it's easier to wrap See, but you can also just still um, go underneath the yarn like this and then wrap it. It has the same effect. Then the next stitch we knit as normally and by doing that we are wrapping the other color once more. And then you just, see I'm moving my index finger forward. I find that a little bit easier. And we are just wrapping the old color every other stitch. See? Okay. I'm going to stop wrapping the yarn now because um, we are at one third of this needle. So that's enough. Um, I'm going to break this yarn and now we are knitting to the end of the first needle and now we are knitting the second needle and I'm just going to see where Okay, so here is our current color, yarn tail. And in order to wrap these yarns so that we don't have to sew them in, we want to weave them in both ways. So now we have woven in this yarn in this direction and the old yarn in this direction and for both yarns we are going to wrap them in the other direction as well so uh, I'm just going to knit up until that stitch right here just above where this yarn tail is hanging let's check Yes, that's about here. I'm at this stitch and that's just above the yarn tail. Okay, so then I take the yarn tail in my left hand and there might not be enough to wrap. So I'm just holding it like this. Um, 
I mean, there might not be enough length to fully wrap around my pinky finger. Um, so with the next stitch, I'm also going to wrap this yarn. Be sure not to pull too tightly here, otherwise you might pucker the fabric here. So we just wrapped this yarn, that means the next stitch is knit as normally. For the third stitch we wrap again, next stitch we work as normally, and it's, it's again the same technique. And you just keep doing this until the um, first, until you only have one stitch left. Um, or actually, no, I have two stitches left now, and I would be wrapping the yarn again now, but I'm not going to, to do that because I don't want to be wrapping yarns on the end of the round. Okay, so this yarn has now been wrapped uh, two times, which means that it is done now and it can be cut later. I'm not going to cut it yet. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. First, let's also finish wrapping this yarn. All right, so we are starting the third round. And in this round, we are wrapping the old color from left to right. And this is a little bit different because the yarn tail is here. So how are we going to wrap that at the beginning of the round? Um, you take your yarn like this and you hold it with your middle finger against the fabric, basically creating a loop. You want to keep the loop a little bit big so that it's uh, easy to knit into. Um, but um, if you only have a short yarn tail, then you might not be able to um, you might not be able to create a big loop. So just take that into account. The first stitch I am knitting as I usually would, and then oh, okay, and then so this is a little bit advanced, but for the second stitch. Um, I can see here that I wrapped the yarn there the previous round. So I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to knit this one as well. And then I'm going to wrap the old color in the third stitch. Um, just because if you wrap a yarn at the same place for two consecutive rounds, you might see that more easily. So I am wrapping the yarn and then knitting a stitch as I normally would and continuing this. And you can see that I'm going to have a lot of yarn left over, but that's okay. We can pull that tight. So just continue until you get to the other end of the loop. Okay, like this. So, to get rid of this loop, I'm simply going to tug on this yarn tail very gently because you don't want to pucker the fabric. There, I'm going to leave it at that. And now you can finish this needle. All right, and now we are back where we started. So um, on the next round, I am going to um, incorporate my next color um, because I am only knitting three rounds per color. Um, but of course, if you want to knit a big chunk of each color, um, then you can just repeat this process whenever you are in the last round of your current color and you want to be switching to a new one so then you can start this video over.
Right, so those were the basics of wrapping your yarn when you're knitting a scrappy sock. And when you've done a couple of colors, you can go ahead and snip off the earlier ones. Um, I wouldn't snip off the ends as soon as you weave them in because with, um, with following rows, you might, you know, you are lifting the stitches, so you might um, be undoing a little bit of your um, weaving in. A couple rows down, I have some more ends and I can just Cut them now and that's it uh, so this is very satisfying it's a very fun technique and it makes knitting scrappy socks just a little bit more enjoyable and I'm going to leave you with some more expert advice because <laughs> Um, I am going to show you um, the beginning section of this sock which doesn't look as neat so if you look at this section right here, you see that it is a little bit choppy, a little bit zigzaggy. Can you see how the new color, for example, this light green here, these stitches are a little bit larger. And that's also where I wrapped yarns, same as here. So why are we not seeing those here? Well, <laughs> that's because I was wrapping the yarns on different rounds. Um, the trick is that you don't want to be wrapping yarns in your first round of the new color. Um, because because in the first round of the new color, you're going to be knitting across stitches of the old color. And with wrapping yarns, you're just pulling a little bit on stitches below and the stitches that you knit in your current row are just going to be a little bit bigger. And when you do that in the first round of a new color, you are going to see that. When you are doing that in the second round or third round, you will not be seeing that. What I used to do was just pick up a new color and join it without wrapping it in first and then just knitting my first round. And then when I came to the end of that first round, I would take that strand and weave it in. Um, but yeah, it shows. So just make sure that you're not wrapping any yarns in the first round of a new color. Every other round is fine. The second, third, fourth, whatever, last round of a color, all of that is fine. Just the first round of a color, you do not want to be wrapping yarns because it will look like this. <laughs> Another thing that I really want you to remember is to not do it too tightly because um, I think otherwise the fabric might pucker if you go to block your socks or, you know, wash your socks. Um, so don't do it too tightly. Don't wrap your yarns around the first round and don't snip off your yarns as soon as you weave in the ends. So wait a couple rounds and then um, cut off your ends. And that's it. I hope you will enjoy knitting your scrappy socks. And if you're wondering about the color order of these uh, socks, because this is Capes Metropolis yarns, um, I have written them down. So please do check the description box of this video where you can find that color order. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi again. I thought I would show you how this sock um, looks now because I've completed the first sock and you can see that I've knit the heel and the cuff in just a singular color. I could have done a scrappy heel but <laughs> frankly I didn't want to bother so uh, I could have done that but um, I chose not to. 
and I have blocked the sock and you can still see the um, weaving in ends a little bit especially here where I didn't use my expert method um, so it's not completely invisible and uh, this may look nice but you'll notice a difference when you um, look at the other side um, because all of the wrapping has been done here because um, here is my beginning of the round so um, this was at the end of the round where we wove in the beginning strand or the, the new color and here was the um, start of the round where we you know also wove in ends um, so yes all of the weaving in ends happens here I'm gonna try and see if um, if I can make this my left sock and that I uh, weave in the ends on the other sock on the other side so that uh, I have the um, <laughs> ugly side <laughs> no the not very neat side I have those on the insides of my feet so uh, but still I am very very pleased and uh, I think it looks great um, some notes on the heel um, I started the heel after I had fully completed one color so um, when you are starting to incorporate a new color uh, I did not do that I did the heel and then um, because I had to be turning my work and work on the pearl side, I did not uh, wrap those floats because when I'm on the pearl side, I'm still not sure quite exactly how to uh, wrap floats. Um, and after the heel is done, um, I did the um, kind of a medium purple stripe and you'll see that at the back of the sock, you know, at the heel side, I only did two rounds there. That was because I knit across the back of the heel in the uh, what would have been the first round there. And that was just so I could keep the weaving and ends all on the same side if I would have knit three rounds, three full rounds of that medium purple, then my weaving and ends side would have switched from this side to this side. And um, that's fine, but um, I thought I want to keep the not so neat part on only one side of my sock. So uh, yeah, just some notes. That is exactly what I did. So um, if you're wondering, hmm, how did Carmen do that with the heel then now you know and then a quick note on the uh, ribbing I did one round of stockinette so one round of knitting with the blue yarn before I started the ribbing because um, if you switch color and then directly um, or immediately do ribbing then for the pearl stitches you'll have this kind of color change in there and uh, I don't really like that so that is why I knit one round plain first. So those were just some extra notes about these scrappy socks. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye!